and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. Uh, before we get started, what are we drinking? Today we are drinking V for Vienna. Nice. It's a Vienna lager. Today we're going to bring to you One Dark Night. It is directed by Tom McLuhan, and he also directed Friday the 13th, Jason Lives. Yeah. The movie stars uh, Meg Tilly. She was in The Big Chill and uh, Psycho 2. Boom! <laughs> Elizabeth Daly is in this, and uh, she's in The Devil's Rejects, and she's in uh, Pee-wee's Big Adventure. And of course, Adam West is in this too. Pure West. The movie starts off with an ambulance pulling up at this crime scene. This big crowd of people outside watching. Shows this kind of weird Andy Warhol looking guy <laughs> hanging out. <laughs> this is the apartment of this famous Russian occultist by the name of Carl Raymar, and he's found dead in his apartment, along with six girls kind of shoved in this closet who are also dead. And it's a bizarre crime scene because there's all this stuff like shoved in the walls, like by brute force, like cutlery, and they go to go move the body and his hand kind of comes out and there's all this lightning comes out of his hand and breaks the ceiling. Then we're taken to the funeral for his Carl Raymar, and his estranged daughter is there, her husband played by Adam West. Raymar's funeral is taking place in this mausoleum. Mausoleum? I thought it was mausoleum. Quite sure it's pronounced mausoleum. On their way back from the funeral, as they're going into their house, that weird Andy Warhol guy <laughs> shows up, a colleague of Raymar, and he tells the two that Raymar is like a psychic vampire who <laughs> feeds off this bioenergy off of other people and kidnap girls, and if they're scared, he can get more energy from them and makes it stronger. The Andy Warhol guy gives her this tape that she is supposed to listen to later in private. Their little group, the sisters, they're called. There's three of them. But one of them is kind of jealous of this Julie because uh, she likes this guy that Julie's going out with. She's got this scheme to kind of haze this Julie. The idea is that they're going to make Julie spend the night in a mausoleum. I thought you said it was a mausoleum. The other girls are going to break in and scare her even more. And they've got, like, masks and, you know, like... Uh, it's a pretty good, legit-looking mask. Yeah, it's it? really good, yeah. Bear in mind, this is the same mausoleum that uh, Raymar is buried in. So they drop her off, everything is uh, supposedly cleared, and we know this by the caretaker guy. Anybody in here? And he also gives the other girls in the car shit too and gets him, tells them to get going. Get going. <laughs> I don't even understand the guy. <laughs> She's kind of settling down and trying to get to sleep. The girls are starting to come back. The estranged daughter starts listening to that tape and starts learning about all of Raymar's experiments. And, and if he gets enough energy, he can come back from the dead. Raymar's coffin or the little slot that he's put in is starting to crack and it's starting to glow and they end up just scaring the shit out of her by putting on the, one of those masks one of them is sort of starts walking towards her like a dead person yeah. like a phantom or something yeah. wearing that sheet and it looks scary yeah, it like pretty scary looking so the more he starts to feed off of julie's fear the more he actually starts to manifest that into physical things and he actually goes as far as being able to open one of the little crypt things and you see a coffin come out, and it opens up, and there's a dead person in there. And he starts sort of walking towards yeah. them. And now the other girls are shit scared, and so he starts feeding off that even more. And then more bodies start coming out. And that's where we're going to end it. So if you want to see what Raymar does, how they're going to deal with all of this, and what the daughter's going to do, stay tuned and keep watching. A really cool movie. Simple plot as far as, like, spend the night in a mausoleum. But then you put all this kind of psychic vampire stuff in there and it kind of changes it all, right? Mm -hmm, yeah, it gives it a sort of a sci-fi yeah, feel. a different to, edge. And it also adds the complexity to it too, right? The effects of the dead bodies and the rest of the movie yes. throughout are just wicked. Yeah. To me, these look like real <laughs> dead bodies. Yeah, you know? yeah. They, it, uh, it looks very like Tom Savini quality, yeah. almost. Not all the dead bodies look the same. Different characters, almost. Mm -hmm. And all the lighting reminds me a lot of the keep, with all the lighting coming out of the, the cracks and the marble and starting to come back to life and all that energy and everything. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. The setting, too. Like, yeah. what a great setting for a horror movie. A graveyard is kind of scary. The mausoleum is scarier because you're trapped and the bodies are stacked vertical. They're not buried. Yeah. 
And it's all helped along by the wicked 80s music, too, yeah. right? The music is very hypnotic because the pacing is so slow for this movie. The music really helps you stay kind of entranced in the movie as the story is kind of slowly unfolding. There's nothing really that happens until like the last, what, 15, 20 minutes of the movie. Yeah, that's when it really kicks up, yeah. But they manage to keep you interested enough with all the little things that the girls are doing, right? Yeah. But they still manage to keep it a horror movie. Spending the night where they are, girls are scaring... The other girl. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Using, you know, kind of horror yeah. methods, right? Yeah. The whole character of this Carl Raymar, you never actually see him. The Andy Warhol guy describing him, and the daughter talking about him, and then you hear about him kind of on the radio. You get to know him really good without ever laying eyes on the guy. Yeah. Like, yeah. even when he's dead in the beginning, there's already a sheet over him, so you have no clue what he looks like. You still know almost. You know him, yeah. <laughs> yeah, which is really cool. It comes at a time, too, all this kind of psychic phenomenon shit is popular. It's right? all in the media and on <laughs> yeah. the talk shows. Yeah, there's you know famous guys like uh, Yuri Geller who's doing all that psychic shit. James Heydrich yeah. is... <laughs> with his kimonos. <laughs> I kept expecting James Randi to show up in the movie and just debunk this race yeah. party guy. <laughs> oh, you see, now that can't be done. Yeah, totally check out one Dark Night. It's stylistically, it looks really good. Yeah. It reminds me a lot of The Keep, Phantasm. Phantasm, for sure, yeah. yeah. Not only because where it takes place, but also like the music is kind of very Phantasm-ish. Mm -hmm. And it has Adam West in it, so how can <laughs> yeah. you go wrong? Exactly. <laughs> Till next time, keep, keep drinking. drinking and don't spend a night in a mausoleum. We know it's pronounced mausoleum. <laughs>